Hey everyone, Mike on Monday coming to you. As promised, uh, we have with us today Dr. Ross Bender. We are live in Plymouth, Wisconsin, so capital of the cheese world in my mind, but anyhow. Uh, so Dr. Ross, would you give us a, a little uh, background of where you're from, where you, how'd you get here, and what are you do doing so. today? Yep, thanks Mike. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I, I live in the Mantuck Sheboygan County area. Uh, we farm just northeast of here about 15 or 20 miles. Uh, my background is I grew up on a dairy farm and I ended up going to school at UW River Falls. Don't hold that against me. And I, I then ended up uh, doing some graduate work at the University of Illinois with Dr. Fred Bilo. And his focus and emphasis is high yield corn, high yield soybean. So a quest for 300 bushel corn and um, 85 or 100 bushel soybean. And uh, in the pursuit of those high yield um, um, quests, the goal was to also understand the nutritional requirements of those high yielding okay. crops. That's where my background comes from. We, we targeted the high yields, but my, the premise of my graduate work was to understand what are those nutritional needs and then how can we sustain those yields with, with good fertility. Um, that transitioned into my current position today as uh, where I work for today now with Mosaic. Mosaic mm -hmm. is a fertilizer manufacturer and supplier to retailers in Wisconsin, um, in the US, Canada, and, and all over the world for that matter. And uh, some of the, the products that we make, um, we're actually probably gonna talk about here today, yep. but um, yeah, okay. that's okay. a little bit about myself, Mike. Awesome, thank you. So we've got a, a local guy who got extremely educated by one of my favorites, <laughs> Fred Bilo. Um, so we're gonna touch a little bit on, on phosphorus nutrition today, so uh, Ross, if, MAP and DAP have been one of the things uh, over the years that uh, have been sold in the marketplace. Um, sometimes they're talked about as basically, yeah, they, they give us the same nutrition, this, that, the other thing. Could give us a little more in depth on what's the difference between these two materials and why we might consider one over the other? Yeah, good question. So both of these phosphate sources are ammoniated phosphate source, sources. DAP is diammonium phosphate, so that's 18460. And then there's MAP, which is also ammoniated, mean, meaning it has nitrogen in it, and that's 11520. So these are two different ways, two different sources of managing uh, phosphate. They're both good sources, but there's unique differences in the chemistry. Mm -hmm. So MAP is a, a, an acid, fairly acidic phosphate source. It's four to four and a half, maybe 4.7 pH. DAP is a little higher pH, seven and a half, give or take. So that's a unique difference between the source uh, sources. It matters because um, some might perform a little differently depending on the soil you put it on. If you have higher pHs in your soil, I would say if you're above six and a half to seven, definitely into the sevens and, and as you approach eight, that means you generally have a lot of calcium in your soil. Mm -hmm. Calcium can react with phosphorus. When that happens, um, the efficiency of your phosphorus tends to go down. So in that case, medium to higher pHs, more acidic phosphate sources generally have a slightly more, um, a slightly greater efficiency. So if you have a medium to high pH, like not all, but many of us do in this area, probably a MAP-based phosphate source is, is good, okay. is better. So DAP is good, uh, MAP is probably a little bit better. And then there's uh, newer phosphate sources out there, newer technologies, one of which is called microessentials. And microessentials is a MAP-based phosphate source, but it has some sulfur with it, particularly uh, a type of the elemental sulfur helps um, influence that pH for a little bit longer, which okay. improves that efficiency just a little bit more. So DAP is good, MAP is better, and I would say microessentials would be the best, mainly because of the soil pH and the chemistry that goes along with the, those different types of fertilizers. So in that uh, micro essentials phosphorus source, I, I know out of our location, we call that S10. Uh, that sulfur source is actually two forms of sulfur, is it? Right, yep. So micro essentials S10, for example, MES10, is 12% uh, nitrogen, 40% P2O5, zero K2O, and then 10% sulfur. And in that sulfur, there's two types, sulfate sulfur and elemental sulfur. The cool thing about sulfate sulfur is that that's immediately available the day you put it down. So when you put it down in front of your crop, that crop will start taking it up immediately. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to the elemental sulfur, the neat thing about that component of it is that it's more of a slow release component. 
So um, it keeps that sulfur available all season long. And one thing that we learned with Dr. Bilo in both corn and soybean is one of the key tickets to higher yielding crops is finding ways to keep those nutrients available for longer. So, so something like microessentials where you have multiple forms in there, it's a really good technology to keep that sulfur available all season long. Awesome, awesome. So, and we have uh, yet another product as well. We call it MEZ. I think that, and yep. that that's the addition of some zinc to basically the S10. Yep. How does that fit? Yeah, so that's a great fit as well. Any crop that you need zinc stands to benefit from something like this, which is the same thing as Microcentrals S10 or MES10, but it has 1% zinc in it. And the neat thing about that nutrient source is that there's a little bit of zinc in every single granule. So when you broadcast those granules out across your soil and a plant root finds one granule, it's going to find a little bit of nitrogen, a bunch of phosphate, a bunch of sulfur, and zinc all at the same time all four nutrients in every single granule. And it solves probably one of the most, the biggest challenge that we have with zinc is distributing those nutrients well. Mm -hmm. And this is a great tool to help distribute zinc better. That, that's awesome. And, and Ross brings up a great point that, uh, and about the distribution. And we've known for a long time that we're trying to get that micronutrient distributed across the acre more evenly. And now we've got a tool to make that happen. And the beauty of, of their products that they bring to us is that longer uh, life in the soil, because we're using multiple forms of, of nutrients, even though or sulfur, uh, so we've got elemental and sulfate out there. So again, we're stretching out the length of which we're feeding that crop. And then the distribution, which is always the biggest challenge, I believe, in, in right. the micro side of it. Um, so you're farming up in the northeast corner of Sheboygan County, lots of lake effect. Um, you're probably near some large dairies. I, I, our conversation earlier, I know that uh, you're, you're helping out with creating forages for dairies yep. near home. How are you using some of your products on the farm at this point? That's a good question. So phosphate management is tricky in our area because it's cold and wet in the early on in the growing season, um, partly due because we have the lake effect, it's cold, partly because we have um, higher concentration of clay in our soils, meaning they stay wet. Um, and we have this influence of the dairy in the, in, in the area and in the industry, which means that there's quite a range in soil test phosphate levels in different geographies. Um, in order to get that root going in a cold, wet soil, phosphorus nutrition is kind of a really important starting point. Um, I'd always, I'd preface my comments by staying, stating to always follow your 590 nutrient management plan. Yep. Um, and in doing so, what we know is that sometimes um, if you have the ability or capacity to do so, locally uh, seed placed phosphate is really a good um, booster shot to your, your early season corn crop or soybean crop or wheat crop or whatever you might be growing. It's a really important way to get that crop going. So on our farm, I position microessentials as uh, MES-10 or MES-Z uh, MES as, as the foundational phosphate source. And because it contains sulfur, I build my sulfur program around that. Okay. So in, in years where I can get across that field and it's not too wet, I'll do probably a liquid side dress program with um, a liquid sulfur and nitrogen program. Some years I can't. Um, and then I'll, um, I'll probably put a dry program out there with urea and ammonium sulfate. But I build my program around that microessentials, and because I know I probably need a little more sulfur than what I'm getting, mm -hmm. I, I, I bolt on um, components to that sulfur okay. program. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're gonna stop there. I know we've thrown a lot of chemistry at you and maybe rattled you a little bit, but uh, Ross and I are gonna have more conversations in the future on different uh, nutritional pieces of the equation. Uh, if you've got questions, you know, fire them off to us, you know, text or uh, share there on, on Facebook and such. But uh, with that, uh, Ross, thank you very much for joining us today on Mike on Monday. And we'll see all of you folks in the future. Have a great day.